Okay, so uh, we're about to get started. I hope your um, speakers are working and you can hear me and everything's okay. Um, so uh, we will begin. So I'm hoping you took a look at Unit 5 in the red booklet, which is Question 13. And uh, in this unit, it's just one question. They, uh, they give you a table. And, um, you know, I put this under biology because that's what we're doing today. But this could have been under physics or math or <laughs> anything else because this had absolutely nothing to do with uh, biology, really. I mean, it's just uh, incidental. It's really just a math problem to do with uh, ratios and really understanding dimensional analysis. So uh, question 13, did anybody have any issues with this question? Uh, so go, going through it, it gives you uh, the uh, ratio of the, uh, the um, uh, brain weight to body weight of these different uh, mammals from <clears throat> uh, gorilla to modern human, et cetera. And uh, it, it is interesting, just as a side note, that humans don't have the, uh, the biggest brain uh, among uh, mammals in terms of uh, weight or of um, a ratio. But um, so in, the question is, it can be concluded that animals with brains of equal weight, so we want to find out equal weight. The truth is <laughs> that's not the best uh, language to use because weight is uh, mass times gravity, as of course you know. Um, they should have asked uh, which one had uh, equal uh, mass because then that's in kilograms. Weight is in units of newtons. And of course, your weight changes on, depending on where you are in the world, which is not being taken into consideration here, of course, uh, because gravity is a little different depending on where you are in the world. So, anyway, carrying on with weight, uh, or mass, really. Uh, so, the first answer choice is a house mouse and a tree shrew. And, um, and if you uh, compare that in the table, you see that they have the same ratio of uh, brain, to, um, uh, brain weight to body weight, which is 1 to 40. But that doesn't tell us what the actual weight is, because we don't know the weight of the animal then we cannot say specifically what is the uh, uh, weight of their brain so that we can compare. So we have insufficient information. Because don't forget, the, you know, the question is asking from the available information. And by the way, if you're completely bored already, trust me, you're going to learn something at the end. <laughs> Even if you got this question right in 30 seconds, uh, you, I promise you'll learn something. Um, then the, uh, the other one was a porpoise and a modern human, and you see from the table that the ratios are a little off, uh, <clears throat> 1 to 38 to 1 to 40, but again, we don't know the, the mass of these organisms, so we can't compare the mass of the brain, because we only know the ratio. We don't know the actual mass. And one would uh, assume that the average uh, porpoise weighs more than the average human being, uh, just, uh, you know, on average. So um, then for C, uh, you have uh, 1.5 kilogram shishu. So now at least we have a, a mass of one of the organisms, and now we have something that we can compare. So uh, we can do 1.5 kilograms, and we know the ratio. OK, so we have 1.5 kilograms, which is the uh, body weight. I'm just going to put that in there so that it's a little bit more clear. And now we could uh, multiply that by the, um, the ratio. And the ratio of uh, 1 to 40, what it's really giving is 1, because it's a ratio of weight, really mass, it's really giving you uh, 1 kilogram of uh, brain. Uh, we'll, we'll call it still weight just because of the way they're doing it. And that's over um, the uh, 40 kilograms of uh, body weight. So it's 1 over 40. And the, the number 1 over 40, of course, you get from the, uh, from, from the chart. And so what is being proposed is that it's 
supposed to be equal to uh, that of the um, uh, squirrel monkey, which is uh, five kilograms um, uh, body weight, and then that is multiplied uh, by one over 12 from the chart. Now, the reason I just uh, did it that way is I do want you to see that um, th that the purpose of this is dimensional analysis. Now, dimensional analysis is a concept that you're going to use on the Gantt sat, you know, many times, uh, I, perhaps more than 10 times, something like that. But you will use it a lot. And so it means that you're going to write things out so things cancel and you know and then it's more clear to you what's going on. So that's why I wrote kilograms of body weight is the actual body weight of the organism. And uh, it's one kilogram um, brain weight divided by 40 kilograms body weight. So this way, if you multiply these things together, kilograms body weight cancels because you have it in the numerator and in the denominator. Then you get a number, and that number will be the kilograms of brain weight. And we're proposing that that would equal the kilograms of brain weight on the other side. So um, that's uh, basically um, the reason why you set this up like this. Because you don't know, do you divide, do you multiply with dimensional analysis? As long as you pay attention to the units, you'll get what you want. Now, um, I wrote it out this way, and uh, I know you can do it many other ways, and you can do it a lot. You can even do it a bit simpler, but I want to make sure for um, for those who just are not accustomed to this. Uh, okay. Okay, there we go. So uh, what we end up with is a simple ratio here, which is uh, 1.5 over 40, and we're proposing that it is... Uh, equal to 5 uh, divided by 12. And then, um, again, you can just, you, you can look at these numbers and realize this is absolutely not true. <laughs> because on the right-hand side of the equation, you have 5 over 12, which is approximately 6 over 12, which is 1 half. On the left side of the equation, you have 1.5 over 40, which is nowhere near approximately 20 over 40. And so we know that answer choice C is wrong. But, you know, the other thing you can do is you can do some uh, cross-multiplying. One way to cross-multiply is you can take 40 times 5 divided by 12. So 40 times 5 divided by 12 would be 200 divided by 12, and then that is supposed to equal uh, 1.5, which it clearly doesn't. <laughs> um, you know, you can just look at that. 200 over 12 is 100 over 6, which is 50 divided by 3, which is about, say, 17, and that's clearly not 1.5. So I'm just showing you uh, different ways that you may need to manipulate in more complicated uh, complicated questions. So, uh, finally, we have the um, answer choice D, and so we're going to just use the identical setup. So we have the, the brain, um, uh, the total weight of the organism, times the ratio of brain to body, and uh, this is for the gorilla, and so that's over 200, and then we have the total weight of uh, the elephant, uh, which is really its mass, 450 uh, kilograms, and then this is divided by its ratio taken from the table, which is 1 over uh, 600. And uh, again, you know, you can do this uh, many different ways, but you can see that on the left side of the equation, 150 uh, over 200 is really just uh, 3 quarters, right? 3 over 4. Um, you can take off the zeros, you get 15 over uh, 20, and then reduce it, and you get 3 quarters. And then I think you can see, you know, six, half of 600 is 300, uh, half of 300 is 150, so 450 is uh, 3 quarters of uh, 600. So now we see that the weights, given the ratios that were given, are actually equal for answer choice D. Now, finally, some learning for those of you with uh, with a strong uh, science background, if you were so patient to wait this long. Um, so you might wonder, are they really going to ask a question that easy on, on the GAMSAT today? 
Well, look, they revised this red booklet uh, in the past and they've let this question in. And I think this question is a good example of uh, GAMSAT 101. And so it's very basic, you know, <laughs> using ratios. And um, I'm going to explain to you how they complicate this question on uh, the, and what you would expect for the real exam um, on how they can complicate this question. First of all, what they did is they gave you the uh, mass of the uh, organisms in C and D in kilograms. So on, on the real exam, they, they're not going to make it, uh, I mean, it's highly unlikely that they're going to make it that simple. But what they can do is instead of giving you, um, say, uh, 450 kilograms uh, for the elephant, they can give you the mass of the elephant, let's say, in, uh, in picograms. So uh, picograms are 10 to the minus 12. Uh, let, me, let me do that. Okay. So uh, 10 to the minus 12 uh, grams is a picogram. And uh, we have 450 kilograms for that elephant. So that's 450, 450 um, uh, and that's times uh, 10 to the 3, okay, because uh, grams. So that means if we were going to uh, put that, um, the mass of the elephant in uh, picograms, uh, it would be, um, we have 10 to the, that would be 10 to the 15. picograms is with a small p. So they can give you the mass as uh, um, 10 to the 450 times 10 to the 50, uh, 10 to the 15 picograms, or we can adjust that using the math that you are remembering from high school, in which uh, I'm going to remove a couple of points off the um, uh, 450. And uh, when I do that, when I remove that, I have to add to the exponent. Okay, and I took two off, so I'm going to add two. So instead of giving you the math um, in uh, kilograms so that you can easily compare kilograms with kilograms, the first step of complication that they like to do on the GAMSAT is that they'll uh, change the units so that you have to convert the units to other units that you should be aware of. So they can put four point, the, the, the elephant weighs 4.5 times 10 to the 17 picograms. <laughs> And uh, then you have to compare that to some other weird unit, not kilograms. Uh, you might have to uh, um, compare that to micrograms or something like that, or, or milligrams, something like that. OK, that's complication number two, uh, no, um, or the next complication. Now I'm going to go to another level. <laughs> um, the next level is that uh, they're going to invent something that you've never heard of. OK, so I see that uh, one of the um, uh, one of the people in our group today is um, um, Anthony. So, uh, Anthony, I'm just going to use your name. You go to the GAMSAT and you're going to hear of a unit that you've never heard before, and they're Anthony's. And what they'll tell you is that uh, um, basically one, one Anthony, and I use the small letter because that's how science goes, use a small letter when you're um, using uh, uh, units, and one Anthony is equal to let's say uh, 2.5 uh, micrograms. So this is the next level of complication uh, on, that you can expect on the real exam. They'll say an Anthony is 2.5 micrograms. And then they'll give you the weight uh, or the mass of the elephant in Anthony's. So they'll say the elephant doesn't weigh 4.5 times 10 to the 17 picograms, it weighs um, whatever, it's going to be something like 10 times uh, uh, or 1.0 times 10 to the something um, uh, Anthony's. 
So they're going to give a unit that you've never heard of, you weren't expected to know that before the exam, and you have to convert that unit in something that you know, but then you have to still convert it again into some way to compare it with something else. So yes, this is a simple question, and a lot of people probably won't even uh, consider um, all that they can learn uh, from this question, but this can be complicated. Uh, um, a lot, and it's very important that when you are doing problems from ACER that you remember that they're trying to teach you a lesson. They are trying to teach you something you're supposed to get, get from it. And I know a lot of students, they look at the red booklet and they discount it. They say it's too easy, it has nothing to do with the real exam, and they get really mad when they do the, the real exam. But it's important for you to understand that as long as you are comfortable with dimensional analysis, that's uh, the most important thing. I'm sorry if you missed that, but uh, uh, this will be uh, videotaped so that you can see it all together. But that was uh, Unit 5. So you, the answer for Unit 5, as I said before, is 13D. Uh, and now we're going to move into uh, Unit 7.